my second surfboard, I rode on it, boards by Harbor Seal Beach, because I'm proud of the city and all has happened. I'm Rich Harbor. Uh, I'm the founder of Harbor Surfboards. How Harbor Surfboards began was obviously shaping and glassing my first surfboard in my parents' garage, which was a 16-year-old's total disaster, I guess. Rich is rich because he took people in and he actually wanted to show them that there's a better way of doing something. And so when he showed me a little bit about what was wrong with either the board that I had built and showed me what he did, it was actually so, so uh, profound to me because I knew that I couldn't get there without having built another 100,000 whatever surfboards I needed to build, that this guy had something that was innate in him. If you're in Harbor Surfboards, you're gonna, you're gonna respect the tradition of it because you have to, because it's displayed. And you walk around, you'll see photos from 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. And, and each, each one of those photos represents a time when there was research and development being done and, and, and boards were being made and guys were riding them and their eagles were out and they're getting their photos and, and they're still on the wall today. And, and a lot of these guys went on to, to be somebody and some of them didn't, but they all put in their time at that shop. main thing about Harbor and, and Vance, Vance is a really good kid, he's only 16. He, by the way, that's how old Rich was when he shaped his first board. So you put that in perspective of, of um, knowledge and it, 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 for Vance to even come in there and approach Harbor and be picked up on him means that he's, he's mature enough to understand where he belongs. And he belongs there because of, he respects tradition. In the beginning, I feel like there was a lot of pressure just growing up in Seal Beach for so many years and especially for me and a lot of other people, we just have such a legendary background of all of our dads and uncles and like grandparents being such legendary surfers. It's um, used to be a lot of pressure, but we all become friends, you know, we all surf together. Everybody knows each other in the water. It's all, it's all family. Everything's a family in Seal, so, you know, you get used to it, you learn to love it. I think the thing that makes like Rich and Harbor such a special place is it's it's still even though it's up to date it's still kind of in a time warp of like boards are shaped there and they've always been shaped there so it's not like they come in a box and they're unpacked it's like things are made there and like he has his tools and templates and like everything and that's kind of how it's always been so it's it's kind of more I hate to say real but it's like the real deal of, of surfboards and time gone by and, and what it is what it was, what the industry used to be. Well, I'm real proud of the, the different people that have come through here, uh, either worked here or hung out here. Uh, I, one example is Jerry Lopez uh, used to hang out here a little bit. And um, I employed Dick Brewer for one summer shaping some real pretty big names. Steve Pesman, founder of, of Surfer's Journal and used to be uh, with Surfer Magazine. I, I guess people felt more comfortable hanging out here. I'll have to admit, I was awfully young to run a, a, a surfboard shop on Main Street in Seal Beach. I was 18 years old uh, and that's awfully young to be in business and uh, I look back on it and I can't believe that my parents, you know, for, they, they put up a thousand dollars or something to help me get started and, uh, and I can't believe handing some 18 year old kid a thousand dollars to start a business. Wow, crazy, 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 but it worked, it worked out.